What's going on, everybody, and welcome to Bootcamp Day Number Seven. Today, we're going to be going over Fibonacci retracements and how I use it to find high probability setups. But real quick, before hopping into it, make sure you guys are doing your daily check-in down in the comments. Let me know that you're still rocking with me and that you're dedicated to make it all the way through this bootcamp. We're officially one week in, and there's still so much more that I'm going to be teaching you guys. So again, make sure to do your daily check-in down in the comments, and let's hop right into it. And if you haven't already, I highly suggest following me on Instagram. C-A-R-W-H-O-R-N-S. I also post lots of free content on there as well. So definitely make sure you guys are following me over there. That link is going to be down in the description. Alrighty, so hopping into Fibonacci retracements, I'm going to be discussing what the retracements even are and how we can use them to identify high probability setups, as well as discussing what I personally look for when price is trading at the retracement. So hopping right into it, the Fibonacci retracements, pretty much what this does is it lets us know areas that price can pull back to. So if we were to just go on up here into a blank space, if a stock is uptrending, setting higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, we can use Fibonacci retracements to understand where this higher low could be or this higher low as well. As a result, helping us prepare for a potential trade if price does come down and hit the retracement. It's gonna be the same thing to a downside. So if price is setting lower highs, lower low, lower high, lower low, we can use the Fibonacci retracements to understand where this lower high could be or this lower high. As a result, helping us identify a low risk short entry on the stock. So as far as drawing these Fibonacci retracements, what you are going to do is you are going to find the lowest point of price action. So as we can see in this example right here, this is the lowest point of price action. I'm actually going to show you on real stocks as well. But this is the lowest point of price action before price makes a strong move to the upside. Once price finally starts topping out in an uptrend, we're looking for bounces. So as price tops out and starts pulling back, that's when you can take the lowest point of price action to the highest point of price action and that is how you are going to draw your Fibonacci retracements. Now, there are multiple different retracements that you can use, like the 23.6, the 38.2, the 0 0.5, 0 0.618, or even the 0.786. I just prefer to use the 50 and the 61.8% retracement. So I take everything off, and I just leave the 0.5 and the 0.618, as those are the most important areas when it comes to retracements. So now, looking at this pivot low, this was the lowest point of price action, and this was the highest point of price action highest point before price started pulling back. As a result, we can take that low point to the high point, and as we see, price comes down and it tests the retracement before the next move up. Now, in a downtrend, or actually going back on over here again, remember in an uptrend, we're looking for bounces. So we're taking the low to the high and looking for a bounce. As far as rejects, we are looking for the highest point of price action before price drops to the downside. As price continues to drop and it finally sets a clear cut pivot low and price starts to push back up, that is when we can take a pivot high to a pivot low and we know, okay, let's watch the 50% retracement or let's watch the 61.8% retracement for a reject. I'm even going to show you guys a trade that I took today using the Fibonacci retracements. So that would be the first pivot high to pivot low. And then as we can see right here, highest point of price action, lowest point of price action before price starts pushing back up. As a result, we can take that high point down to the low point and look for a rejection at the 50 or the 61.8% retracement. And as we see, price continue to drop to the downside. So again, remember, in an uptrend, we're taking pivot low to pivot high for a bounce. In a downtrend, we're taking pivot high to pivot low for a reject. So now, actually drawing these on some charts. You can draw Fibonacci retracements on so many different time frames. It just really depends on the overall price action. But looking at CRWD on the monthly time frame, I actually believe this did hit a Fibonacci retracement. So if we take the pivot low, lowest low to the highest high on the monthly time frame, we can actually see right here price came and tested that 61.8% retracement before having the next move up. So if we just go ahead and mark this and we go to a daily time frame and let's put on a three year, head on over here, we can see that price came down bounced right off that 61.8% retracement, had a nice daily close above the level, which would have validated an entry long. You can use this for swings. You can use it for day trades. And as you see from that point right there, once price closed above it at 140, it rallied all the way into a high of it looks like around 205.87 before then pulling back. If we head on over to SPY on the monthly timeframe, 
how could you have known that this 350 area was the low last year and i made a video the day before we hit this level telling everybody to watch it if you take the lowest low the 2020 low to the all-time highs at 480 you can see that 349.12 was the 50 percent retracement if price were to break below that it would have likely test 318.25 sure enough what did we do pretty much tested it to the dollar and then we rallied all the way up into 460 from that point again i made a video the day before we touched it telling everybody to watch that if we head on over to qqq on the monthly time frame if we just go ahead and delete this take the pivot low again 2020 low all the way up to the high point right here i told everybody to watch 258 the day before we touched it and as you see price had a nice drop below and then reclaimed it held it here held it here held it here and now price has rallied all the way to a high of almost 390 off of that point if we go to the weekly time frame on qqq let's start looking we have a pivot high pivot low here pivot high pivot low here pivot high pivot low here so what can we start doing let's take this pivot high to pivot low price got very close to 61.8 however did not hit it let's take this one right here Price hit the 61.8, denied it, and as we can see, price then moved into a new low. We have another pivot high, pivot low right here. Let's take that one. 50% retracement, 50% retracement, started moving to the downside. How about let's just take this highest high all the way down to this lowest low. And it looks like we had a little bit of price action at that level, but not too much actually it ended up breaking above it. But if we head on over to SPY, SPY actually did have the reaction. I remember the level 429.61 because I was waiting on it for literally ever to hit and it hit it, and we took a beautiful trade off of that 429.61. We go to the daily time frame, we see that we rejected it multiple times right here. So again, you can use this for swing trades, you can use it for day trades. It just depends on what your trading goal is going to be. So now let's look at a daily time frame. Let's take this 348.11 all the way up to this high point right here. We can see that price held that 50% retracement multiple times. What about this pivot low to pivot high right there? You can actually see price hit the 50% retracement to a T right there. So you can draw these on the daily time frame. You can draw them on the four hour time frame. So if we go to a four hour, there was an area that I think it actually hit on ES and then we bounced on Friday. Yeah, so if we look at the four hour on ES, we can see that price came down and it closed on top of that 61.8. So here is our pivot low on ES, lowest point of price action, highest point of price action. As we can see, price closed right on top of that 61.8% retracement on Friday and now we have rallied all the way up to a high of 45.30. Now, as far as earlier, because I have this drawn on my chart, I go live on my YouTube channel every single morning at 8 a.m. Eastern time and give you guys a completely free watch list for the day. Look at the one hour time frame. What do we have? A pivot high, pivot low. What does that say? Hey, we should watch the 50% and the 61.8% retracement for a potential reject. And I told everybody to watch these levels as well. So if we look at ES, what happened? 61.8 right in the morning at 9.35, drop to the downside. Let's head on over to NQ, same thing. Had a one hour downtrend, as you see, pivot high, pivot low. Pull up a one hour time frame so you guys can see it. Pivot high, pivot low. What a price reject right in the morning, the 50% retracement before dropping all the way down to a low of 15,334. So now what about an intraday fib? Because this is exactly what I use today to find a beautiful put entry on SPY. So looking at SPY today, price came up, it hit that 50% retracement and made a move to the downside. So as a result, what was I looking for? Price to come back up, potentially set a higher low and then take price lower. So as price rejected that 50% retracement, dropped to the downside, I noticed, okay, we have this high point, we have this low point as price started to move up. So what did I do from there? I took this pivot high to pivot low and this was traded live inside of Team Bull Trading today. Traded live. We had an entry here and we had an entry right up here. So again, we rejected the 50. We made a strong move down. I took the pivot high, pivot low. I told everybody exactly where I was watching for a rejection. 449, 449.12. And then my stop loss was at 449.3, which was above here. So now breaking it down to the smaller time frames, exactly what I was seeing as price came up, started rejecting just short of the level. I started the position and then right here is where I entered full position. And then from there, we were able to catch this all the way back down into a new low of day and all the way down into 448. And I told everybody that I was fully exiting the position because we had strong buyers on ES, which I was able to see through Bookmap. And if you guys do want a video on Bookmap for this bootcamp, definitely let me know down in the comments. But again, you can use these Fibonacci retracements on any time frame. It just depends. Where is that clear-cut pivot high, pivot low? 
So if we're looking at a one hour time frame, yeah, we had this pivot high, pivot low right here. And what happened on Friday? Price came up, hit the 50% retracement at 452.9. And then sure enough, what ended up happening? We dropped down and set a new low. These Fibonacci retracements are everywhere. Now, what invalidates these setups if price breaks it? So as we see, price broke the 50% retracement. If it breaks it, I don't care about it anymore. I delete it off my chart. If it breaks the 61.8, I go ahead and I delete it. I don't care about it anymore. So as price broke through right here, immediately just delete it. It's no longer valid. As long as price does not break and hold the level, it is still valid. This one right now, however, 452.9 is invalid because price set a new low. So at this point, there's actually no other clear cut pivot high, pivot low that we could use for a good reject besides there to there. So maybe price comes up today and it tests 450 to 450 25 and it rejects. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it just blows right through it and it continues to the upside. But the reason why I like Fibonacci retracements is because it lets us know an exact level to watch. With supply and demand, it's more so an area that you want to watch. With Fibonacci retracements, it's very precise on what level you should be watching. That's why I prefer to use it. And again, it's very easy to use. All you have to do is find a clear cut pivot high to pivot low or a clear cut pivot low to pivot high. And then it lets you know what areas you should be watching. If we're looking over here on SPY on the one hour time frame, pivot high, pivot low price tried to bounce that 61.8 but ultimately it failed if we head on over to the five minute time frame and we actually look at price action when it hit it and this is another reason why i really like the retracements because you can try it off of the level and then if price breaks it you just get out of the trade so your invalidation point is right on the opposite side so as we see price comes down it tests the 61.8 try to hold it as support try to hold it as support try to hold it as support Where's your stop loss? Right on the opposite side of those candlesticks. So as price dropped right here, this would have stopped you out of the trade for a very small loss. And as you can see, price continued to downtrend throughout the day. Now, what I see a lot of traders do is they're entering off of these intraday setups and they don't necessarily have an area where they can say, oh, this is my invalidation point for the trade. So the losses start to get larger and larger and larger. That's why with the retracements, you can look at this and be like, oh, price rejected the 50% retracement. Let's go short with our invalidation point right above here. Or a price comes up to 61.8 and it denies it at 450.26, depending on how the price action reacts and you got short, where's your stop loss? If price starts showing strength right above this level right here, that's why I love the Fibonacci retracements because it lets you know an exact level that you should be getting in and it lets you know exactly when you should be getting out. Here's another example of a trade that I ended up taking with Fibonacci. I believe this was uh, last week, when was this? 727. So whenever that was, like a week and a half ago. But as we see with QQQ, I took this pivot high, pivot low right here. Look at what price did. Right to the 50% retracement. We sniped it off a smaller time frame. So a one minute or two minute time frame. We sniped an entry at the strong rejection of the level, and we were able to catch it back down into the low of day. And again, I did all of this live. I told everybody I'm watching 383.05 up to 383.43 for a reject and as price confirmed the level short that is when we got short and we're able to catch this down to the downside so pretty much what i'm looking for when price is coming to these fibonacci retracements is exactly what we discussed in previous classes if you guys haven't seen the previous boot camp videos i highly suggest that you guys go and watch those as soon as you're done with this if price comes down to our retracements, so we're looking for a bounce what are we looking for bullish hammers bullish engulfing dragonfly dojis or long lower wicks to suggest that buying is happening at that level. Piece it together with the volume, and the volume is going to tell us if orders are being filled and buyers are entering the market at that bounce. If we're looking for a reject, we're going to be looking for inverse hammers, gravestone dojis, bearish engulfing, long upper wicks, and then piece that together with the volume at the area of interest that is going to let us know if sell orders are being filled up at that area and if sellers are entering the market. If we start seeing the volume in the price action confirm at the level of interest, what does that do? It confirms an entry. And now that we've gone through how to identify all of our levels, support and resistance, supply and demand, Fibonacci retracements, tomorrow we are going to be piecing everything together 
price action, volume, and all of the levels of interest. And I'm going to be showing you guys how to find high probability setups combining all of those. So if you guys did find value at bootcamp day number seven, as always, make sure you guys smash that like button. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel if you aren't already. And make sure you do have that bell notification on so you are notified every single time a bootcamp video is uploaded. And if you haven't already, make sure to do that daily check-in down in the comments. Other than that, everybody have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see you guys in tomorrow's bootcamp video, bootcamp day number eight.